Hi folks and welcome to another episode of Grandpa's Farm. In this episode, we're building a storage building. We're starting with the ground up. So roll up your sleeves, get ready to put a little sweat equity into the property and uh, let me show you how I go about building a building here on the farm. Takes a lot of hard work. You know, one thing about these projects like this is sometimes they require some specific tools that, uh, well, most homeowners simply are not going to own. And uh, this is one of them. This is a, a transit. It's made for uh, exactly what I'm doing here, which is trying to level off a piece of property. Now, I am a tool hound and I insist on having the right tools for me for doing the jobs that I'm doing because I'm old and I got a bad back and I'm out of shape and so anything that can save me some labor I'm gonna do so in this case I went down to my local Home Depot store and bought a professional grade self-leveling laser level and uh, that is what I am, like that I guess, that's what I'm using for this job. I'm using my self-leveling laser level so that I can get the grade right without a billion trips back and forth uh, to a shop or what have you. So it comes with a couple different things. Now this was 570 bucks roughly. That's a lot of money, sure is. But uh, what would it cost to have a contractor come and shoot your grades for you? Comes with a tripod, adjustable for height and stance got sharp pointy little rubberized feet on it so it'll hold well on a wood floor but it'll also do well on dirt gravel concrete what have you now this particular unit is set up to do both horizontal and vertical very accurate out to uh, I think a quarter inch at 150 feet or 200 feet or something so it comes with a tripod with which to mount the motorized self-leveling head on and then it comes with a pole on which to mount the target and as the level line lights up on this screen here it beeps and tells me when I'm level it saves days worth of work it really does it's a it's a huge time saver and it's also got a bracket so it can be hung on a wall uh, or attached to a wall and uh, then you could use it for you know mundane things like hanging pictures on a wall or something so not only will it shoot horizontal this way but it'll also give you a perfect vertical that way um, if you hang it on a wall so expensive tool yes you know 600 and something dollars this one will last me my lifetime certainly my sons will probably make good use of it. The only thing, sorry about the shaky camera there. The only thing that's going to be an issue will be technology. I used to have one before this, but it wasn't self-leveling, which means I had to go out there with dials and turn it and watch a little bubble and get it, you know, left and right, left and right until I got it where I thought it was pretty level. And then, of course, anything that happens on the ground or rock moves or whatever knocks it out and I'm out of level again and so I've had problems with that this one made by Bosch good quality tool company is self-leveling so if while it's out there a rock moves or something uh, it recalibrates and resets itself back up as level again so it's self-healing in that regard um, again I'm a big tool hound do you need to buy one of these no I'm sure there's a tool rental place you could probably rent one from 
uh, probably not for very much money at all. I bet you, you could rent it for 30, 40 bucks a day, probably maybe less than that. Um, you know, maybe around 30, 40 bucks a day. But you know, so you rent it and you use it to shoot your graves, just like you see here in the video with me setting the post and stomping on the gravel, packing it in, using my girth. All this obesity has some value. I can crush the gravel in pretty damn well by myself. Don't need a compactor. I weigh as much as a compactor does. Um, and so I'm gonna get that foundation good and flat and level. And the reason why I bought one instead of renting one is because when I get done with that project, I got about 30 more down the road. And uh, by the time I get done with all of them, I might as well own the thing as opposed to rent it. That's my situation, that's not necessarily yours. So you can rent it, you can buy it, it's up to you. Still, it's only 560 bucks, 570 bucks. It's a whole lot cheaper than hiring a contractor to come in and do the work. And it's a nice fun tool to play with. So uh, it just depends on your situation and your economy and, and where you're at. So the building I'm building is going to be a, a tool storage shed. We used to have these greenhouses here on the property when we first moved down. We set up little greenhouses that we used to store our tools in. And unfortunately, the snow load was too much for them this winter. While I was down in Florida before I got back up here to Alaska, the snow load was so heavy it crushed the greenhouses. So I'm building this to have a good solid roof, wood framed construction shed to put all my tools into. So the time being, I got to store all these in the car because I don't have any, safe, any place safe weather tight and there's certainly no room inside the cabin what with the chickens and ducks in there you know my cabin's only 16 by 16 and the, the chickens and the ducks are taking up four feet by four feet that's a lot of space in a 16 by 16 foot space so when you're building a building on your property the first thing you have to start out with is the foundation and the foundation just takes hard physical labor grab your shovel grab your wheelbarrow grab your gravel rake get a load of gravel delivered and then start putting it where it needs to be this investment will pay off tenfold down the line. You've got to be sure you get your ground in properly and get everything good and level and secure. If you don't have a good foundation, you're never going to have a good structure on top of it. This really likes to inspect everything I do. You can hear that tone, that lets me know that I'm right at the perfect grade. Had to flatten that out a little. Okay, so now you can see that that side's level. The I uh, graded that out, raked it, and you can see how it slowly climbs up the board. That's gonna be my finished grade. Now what I'll do then is I'll set these railroad, or the six by sixes up on top of that and that'll give me a perfectly flat and level structure. So the process is you get your gravel down first, then we get my six by sixes, we get them in place and get them all leveled up and squared up. <clears throat> then on top of that, we start building the deck. And as you can see here, I've been trimming off the end of the boards and of course, Miss Lily just got to play with them. She's getting awful big, but she's still just a puppy. She was born in October, so she's just only about uh, eight months old now. Believe it or not, she's still growing. Getting the first board going on the corner is always the hardest because nothing is standing up by itself. <clears throat> so here I'm trying to hold two boards, actually three boards all at once. You can see the board on the back just fell off. Try to get everything lined, hold it up so it's square and plumb and true, and then try to get nails in it. This is the toughest part is that corner. Got to have them tunes playing while I'm working. Helps make the day go by. Now here I'm using my track saw, which is sort of a 
portable way of having a table saw, but thinning off the edge. And in this case, I'm cutting the, uh, the tongue off the tongue and groove boards. Here I'm setting the first board deck. This shows a better angle for cutting off that tongue. I love this track saw. It enables me to be out working in the field and cut a straight line just as if I had that board up on a table saw. Now believe it or not, that board's fairly heavy. I don't know what they made these things out of. Well, I know they made them out of pine, but that thick uh, hardy board decking is pretty tough stuff. Well, here it is, the finished deck. Uh, and I tell you what, an old fat guy like me, I'm tired. Six by six treated uh, boards on the bottom, poles, posts, I don't know what you call them, six by six is treated. In a uh, 20 foot long, two of them 20 foot long, two of them 10 foot, made a box. Covered that with two by 10, two by uh, inch and a half by uh, boards. So two by 10s by 10 foot long in this case. Um, covered that with this decking. This decking is kind of special stuff. It's uh, about an inch and a quarter thick, so it's almost twice the thickness of normal three quarter inch plywood. But because it's going to be a workshop and a uh, place to store my tools, I wanted the sturdier, uh, harder floor down. Um, also, this stuff is actually the finished board is actually four by eight. Uh, something going on in the lumber industry right now that really has me kind of peeved. When you go out and you buy a sheet of uh, a four by eight sheet of three quarter inch tongue and groove plywood, which you would use for doing flooring like this or, or roof decking or what have you, they've been shorting them in width. They're no longer 48 inches by 96 inches. They're now 47 and a quarter inches. So when you lay three or four of them across, you start shorting yourself. Uh, when I put the roof on our dry cabin um, and on the floor of the dry cabin, we ended up being two inches short of 16 feet on four sheets. So uh, it's kind of perturbed, whereas with this flooring, it actually is the, is the correct width. Well, I got to give a little warning to the dog here. Yep, that worked. You hit this little button on the side, it just gives her a tone. That tone reminds her that the next step is going to be a shot. This way she comes back and... Okay, here you can see what I mean by the tongue and groove. You can see the board on the left, that's the groove. The board on the right has the tongue that goes in between the two grooves, and that forms for a nice safe seal, and it gives it some strength because you're going down the length of the board. So that's what your tongue and groove looks like. Um, so far I think the project is coming out really well. It was a lot of work. The gravel was a lot of work. Uh, the sweat in the term sweat equity when you're building value in your property. Uh, sometimes that sweat equity actually involves sweat. And in this case, uh, shoveling all this gravel and hauling it with a wheelbarrow and a shovel and a gravel rake, you know, it wasn't nice and easy and fancy and easy to do like I had a front end loader and a bob backhoe here. Um, did it by hand and there's nothing wrong with that. It's great. Uh, it's good exercise for me that I sorely need and um, really wasn't all that hard to do. It really wasn't. You know, a couple of days of shoveling gravel uh, got it done. Just take it easy, take breaks, drink plenty of water. Um, I filled some holes here on the driveway and dressed out the rest of the driveway with the extra gravel, but got a good base down, uh, put my six by sixes on top of it, got them all perfectly level with my new laser level. And uh, I think it's gonna be a good deck. So now we go on to stage two. We'll start putting the walls up. Uh, this is gonna be an uninsulated shop, especially since now I'm going to be selling and getting out of here. Um, so I'm just going to build it out of two by four walls with uh, uh, two by eights to carry the rafters and uh, put the metal roof on top of that. So it'll be it'll be plenty sturdy enough. It'll be plenty big and strong enough to carry the snow loads for here in Alaska. Um, so it'll be it'll be just fine. It'll be a really good building here for whoever buys this property and uh, needs a place to, to store stuff for whatever purpose. Has a lot of uses that you could do with a 10 by 20 foot uh, building out here. Whew. Okay, well on that note, I guess it's time to move on to the next one. Folks, thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. Um, I know construction isn't not normally part of the farming thing, but you know, it is too. Uh, farming involves a lot of buildings. Uh, you need a lot of space to house animals and critters and tools and equipment. And so 
if you're going to be a homesteader or if you're going to do some farming, um, you got to know how to swing a hammer and use a saw too. So all these things uh, make a huge difference. They can make and save you a lot of money um, or you can waste a lot of money having someone come in and build these things for you. So I hope you enjoyed following along with this project. Stay tuned for parts two and three when we do the walls, which will be start part two, and then putting the roof on, which will be part three. Hopefully, uh, well, hopefully I won't be here for those. Hopefully I'll sell the property before I get that far, but I do hope to be getting to those pretty quickly. So anyhow, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you more later. Thanks, guys.